All right, so it's time to start the stream. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna continue working on my roguelike today. And this is what I have so far. So we have, um, we can draw in the terminal and we have types of tiles, so the dots are empty tiles, the hashes are walls, and here in the center we have our char player character, and we can move around, and we can't uh, move past walls. And so that's what, what I did last time. And today I'm thinking it would be nice to have some enemies, perhaps? Or just something that's not a player, like... I'm thinking I, I'm thinking I can add, like, a rat that, like, tries to chase you and attack you. Of course, we don't have health or anything like that so far, but that can be so we can't really attack, but that can be done later. Um, so yeah. So the rat would actually need to... ...go to the player. But to do that, it needs to find the path... Uh, ...that it can take. Because it might not always be able to go in a straight line. There might be something blocking the way, so it would need to know that it needs to go like this. So we will need some kind of pathfinding algorithm and I might be able to find something like a library Okay, stop a star. Um, so I guess we could just use this, but also I could try and implement it myself. I think I might try and implement a star a star myself because I've never done it before. Um, uh, interesting, it's actually defined in terms of strings here. Try it. Let's try impl implementing A star. So we can just try and uh, create a function for that. Let's say it's called find path. And it's going to have a start, it's a position, and an end. And what we get is 
a... I guess an array of positions. That we need to travel. To get from the start to the end. Right. So that's going to be the function we need to implement. So here we, here it shows that here they're passing in a heuristic function as an argument. I don't think I'm gonna need that because I can probably just include it here in the function itself because it's not gonna be generic researching for your game. Yeah, I'm trying to, so what I'm trying to do is I want to implement an enemy. So here's the player. Um, but I want to have like an enemy, like a rat, let's say. Um, but if there's something blocking the way, I want the rat to find the path to the player. And... For that, I I guess I need to. Well, I could just uh, grab some code that does that, but I want to write the code myself, so I need to figure out how to uh, implement the pathfinding. Also, hi. <laughs> uh, I, I forgot to start my bot. That should probably do that. Uh, that's not the right project. Not as good if you look at someone else's code and figure out how they do it and then do it your way. I mean, I guess I could do that. I mean, it's kind of what I'm doing here. There's some code here. Although it's kind of confusing. Maybe a star is not the best. What if we see rogue, uh, rogue like that? Finding algorithm. It just looks kind of a textbook. Mm, 
mean, this is some pseudo code, so it's like not real code, but it's kind of like code. Like it's not a real programming language, but it looks like code here. I guess they're doing this so so more people could understand it or something. And it's a little bit confusing, but like um, it kind of looks like all the other programming languages, so it's not too hard to understand, but Okay, so yeah, it does look like most people use the A star pathfinding algorithm, so I guess I should implement that. Okay, so I guess we start with just I know that that's the, um, like a tile that's the starting position, so... destroyed it. <laughs>
I don't understand how I'm supposed to implement the heuristic function. I thought it was just the cost of the tile, but it's actually like the cost of a path, it seems. Or like getting from one tile to another. doesn't tell you how to implement that.
think the heuristic is just supposed to help you find the paths quicker. So it's probably... wait... Might not be important.
Alright, I'm done with the pathfinding. Now I just have to see if it works, which it probably it doesn't. But let's see. Alright, I actually need to check for out of bounds as well. Discord doesn't exist, then it should be really large or something like that.
Hello there, S-T-E-V Ugnin, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I'm trying to implement the A-star algorithm in Go right now.
I recommend you learn Tailwind. It is so easy to do front end, front end with it. Um, I've played around it a bit with it, but I don't uh, really uh, do much of front end, though. Mm, I'm mainly interested in like desktop development. Yeah, it's a CSS framework. Yeah, I've tried this a bit. What are you building? I'm building a... I'm making a game basically a roguelike. Um... One sec, I can show you. Oh, oops. Yes, I'm making a terminal roguelike. And uh, this is what I have so far. We have a... We have walls. We have our player character. And I can move around with the arrow keys. Um, and now, currently, I'm, I'm trying to implement the A star algorithm. Uh, the A star algorithm. Uh, so far, I'm not successful. I'm trying to debug, debug it, and, and I want to. I want to have pathfinding so that I can implement an enemy. A pong like game. Um, it's not really like pong. It's, it's a roguelike, like one of those traditional ones, like you, you can use the arrow keys to move around your character. It's gonna have like a level generation, right now I just have a box, but um, we might like generate some rooms and stuff. Or like caves, I don't know. There's gonna be enemies, they're gonna be able to fight and have health and stats and stuff. Use type error instead of bull. Mm, where am I using bull? You mean here? Here I'm just trying to find if there's a node within a slice. So I don't think I really need an error here. I'm just trying to f like find if this uh, slice contains the neighbor. And if it doesn't, then we add it to the list. Yeah, so back to debugging. I saw there was a library for A star pathfinding, but I decided to make it myself because I've never done it before. Okay, so we somehow don't find the path. Seems to me like we're like 
going to the top left. We're not going to the right at all. We start at X20. Mm, but there's we don't go above that here, it seems. Which we need to do if we want to get to 23, so... I'm not sure what's happening there. We do try to go to the right, but it doesn't seem like it happens. Can I do a conditional? So we're here we have a tile to a position to going to the rise.
it almost seems like it's traveling away from the target. Although the Y position seems correct, kind of. Oh, <laughs> sheesh. Had an X there instead of Y. That seems pretty good. <laughs> okay, so I wanna... Now what I wanna do is uh, visualize it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We're traveling from this point to here. Um, one thing I should try is to put a wall between where it has to go and where it has to end up. But let's try a longer distance. Okay, that is not correct. Well, I guess technically it is correct because we can move diagonally, diagonal, uh, diagonally, and uh, it doesn't really matter that you do that. Um, I probably need to change the characteristic to be a sum instead instead of max
uh, oops, I need to Okay, if I add these Okay, now it's uh, straight It doesn't um, jump around diagonally Instead it tries to go straight Sweet, so yeah, now let's try and put a wall in between Or Not in between, but in the path Okay, so we have a wall here and the path finding goes around. What if we make it more complicated? So it seems like it's working. It seems like it's working. Okay. All right, I'm back. So yeah, so now that we have a way to find a way to find the path from one point to another we can try and implement some sort of entity I was thinking I could uh, make like a rat entity I would just try to um, find the path to the player and uh, well eventually attack the player we're gonna implement that later probably but for now we just um, we can just try and implement an entity that follows the player. Okay. So I guess instead of the main loop deciding what an entity does. Maybe the entity should decide what it does.
now that I think about it, to get position and set position can just take a position. I guess. Well, move is not actually a position. Maybe I should call it like vector or something. Alright, whatever. Uh, next move. Maybe instead of next move, I should just say which tile the entity wants to go to. So then we can apply the pathfinding to any entity. So I'm just gonna say get target position and uh, it's gonna give me a position that we're aiming for. part right now, just so we can work on the actual thing I'm trying to work on. <laughs> okay, so we get, we have the target position. We need the player to implement that. Which is a bit tricky because the player's target depends on the input from the keyboard and we don't know what it is until we press it, press a key, press the directional key. I guess what we can do is say last input dx and which is an int and last input dy. So when we press a key we store what the input was. And then when we say get target position, we just say um, that it's gonna be a position. X is gonna be 
dx plus plus less input dx and same for y. I guess I have to say what these values are, even though I just need them to be zero. I mean, it should be implemented with an interface. That says like... For the player. Instead of checking... For the sticks input function, maybe... We check if it has like an... Entity, input, interface, whatever, thingy. And then if it does, we ask where to move, but whatever. This'll work for now. So it doesn't actually have that because we don't have that in the interface.
Okay, so if an entity implements the controlled interface, then we call this set last input method. And we kind of need to know if the player moved, though. Maybe we can, we can just do a hack and say this. Can I not have... I guess maybe I can't initialize it at the global scope. Hey, Davy. Oh my god, I just... That's kind of weird. Okay. Okay, so that's how I do that. I just implemented a path, path finding not that long ago. So here the X's mark the path from one point to, no to another point. The hashes are walls. So yeah, we can find a path around the walls now. Which I can use to implement entities that follow the player. Why do I... oh, okay. That's... yeah, I do it after this one. Hey, Kuvi. How did your stream go? What did you... do on your stream, Kuvi? just gonna do kind of a hack here we're just gonna say that player moved here even though we don't know it's a player but 
only the player should accept input anyway, so it's fine probably. We got ridden by Adam earlier. Yeah, I saw that. I was there. I was there when that happened. Why don't you use that for... Oh, the solid character? I don't know. I, I just... Uh, I can't type that, so that's why I didn't. I gotta try it. I guess it kind of works. Well, actually, I can uh, I can change the color of the background, so I could also just make it empty and change the color. We implemented all mechanics needed for the mage tower and started sketching it tomorrow. Maybe I'll have the tower done. Okay, cool. Um. What what mechanics did you implement? I think there's also like a semi-transparent symbol maybe. The slow time area, the bubble, and the clouds. Cool. I think I saw the, the clouds, but I didn't see the slow and the bubble. Okay, yes. Okay. These are apparently Unicode. But that's maybe okay. Look at that, it's, it's got the, the ring. Oh, that's a bit much. <laughs> I think uh, roguelikes use like ASCII or extended ASCII, whatever. This this character is Unicode. I don't know if that's bad necessarily. I guess I guess you would just have to play it on a more modern machine that supports Unicode in the terminal. space for empty space. I guess I could. The dot is, I think, from NetHack. I think in NetHack... Uh, oops. I 
Yeah, in NetHack you have dots for empty space, and black means solid. Solid walls. Uh, oops. It's hard to move in this game because it uses HJKL like in Vim and I don't use Vim. Okay, anyway. <laughs> So we set the last input. And then I guess what I want to do is iterate through all the entities. And ask for their target position. Yeah, I can do colors. Box supports that as well. I could like probably change that here. Ignore that, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't see that. You didn't see that. Okay. I can have blue walls. with that later um okay so i guess i can use a map Because we, we want to ask for the target position first and only then update the entities, I think. Good night, Rinks.
What the heck? Oh, it does warn you. Okay. Okay, so we then find the path, which is not great. I should probably cache the paths, but that's fine, <laughs> I guess. I mean, you're really, like, you're not running at 60 FPS, you're gonna, you're only gonna calculate this when you press the button, so should be okay. Also the maps are probably not gonna be that big. Well, why is it weirdly... It's like delayed by one turn. <laughs> Ah, because I'm trying there. Okay. Nothing really changed, we still move the same, but now we should be able to have an entity that 
wants to go to perhaps the player's position. I don't need this to be a pointer. What should a rat look like? What symbol should I give it? I was thinking R, but maybe there, there's something better that I could. Uh, represent the rat with. How does it not implement entity?
Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, I don't, I don't break here. But why? Why would that? Why would that set it to the right? Am I like storing a pointer to a pointer? It's probably what's happening. How does that even work? <laughs> the fuck? is interface then it's a pointer uh, I don't think that's necessarily the case anyway I was apparently I was uh, I had this be a pointer and then I took a reference to that but entity here was a pointer as well so I took a pointer to a pointer and then somehow it got the position of the rat itself instead of the player. I don't even... I don't get it. <laughs> anyway, so it works now. Look at that, the rat is following me. It, it can find its path. I can't move diagonally yet, but that should be something that the player can do. But yeah, 
uh, I implemented the pathfinding myself as well. That's what I was doing most of the time today. It's like my Undertale's cat and mice puzzle game we did for one of many jams. I haven't uh, seen it. Is it, on, is it on your itch? Why is it being like that? This is cool. <laughs> Eats cat. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how it works in the in real life. doesn't uh, stay Nice. 
What symbol should I use for the rat? Should it just be R? Or should it be... Maybe I can look up like... Or like... Um... Use emojis? Well, I guess that's... I guess if I'm gonna use Unicode, then I can use emojis. Why is this not loading? Hey, nerd soul. Did you see this? We have... I have uh, implemented pathfinding. And we have a rat now. Attract- oh, I, I guess it can go on top of- wait, what? Yeah, I can- it can actually go on top of me. <laughs> I guess I should make it so that you can't uh, go to a tile if there's an entity there. Uh, oh, oh. Could not find path? Huh. Oh, is it because I walked into a wall? I guess, well, I don't need to panic for that, I think. Oh yeah, I added this, I don't need this. Um... Oh, I thought I, thought I walked into a wall, but... I was here and the rat was on top of me. Yeah, I can't uh, go across the wall, but... it looks so different in the in like my chat uh, window uh, oh no that's not correct looks like this in the chat window but here, here it's different and will these look different in different fonts maybe Ooh. 
that does not work. Maybe it's just VS Code. Nope. Can't use that. But the walls work. They're, they're kind of different though. There's some like weird... Uh, what's it called? Subpixel um, font rendering. Modules in the VS Code terminal. I I have changed my default font. I'm using a, what's it called? In Consolata. There's there should be um, What's it called? Oh, it's a go. Yeah, emoji. Maybe that's what I need. Should be the first thing. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> Maybe it can't uh, find it. Oh, it needs uh, quotations. Okay, it doesn't work. Or wait, actually... Nope, it doesn't. Nerd fonts. I have even more stuff because I use patched font with nerd font images there. too much with with that uh, what is this oh I just have a simple monospace font I think it's uh, in Consolata is pretty popular I think Oh, I can't undo now.
I can have this. Oh, it's not even correctly spaced. It's like behind this dot here. This is more like a slime though, or something. It takes up like two spaces. Alright, well I think that's about it. I did what I wanted to do today. 